Welcome to uh, lesson five of this MIS 6110 course. Uh, in this particular lesson, we'll be talking about supply chain management, ERP, uh, and some of the e-commerce considerations associated with uh, the support of IT and technology in the organization. Let's begin by talking about supply chain management and what supply chain management actually means. And during your MBA curriculum and during the coursework for your MBA, you'll be talking about the implementation and support of supply chain. Obviously, understanding that supply chain is all the activities that occur from the port of point of order entry to the point of order fulfillment. Essentially, all those uh, individual activities within the organization really represent the supply chain. And we, we talked about Porter and the value chain associated with the supply chain, et cetera, in an earlier lesson. For purposes of technology and IT, our considerations around the supply chain really deal with the automation of the supply chain. If you consider traditionally that most of the different departments or groups within an organization functioned within what we call islands of technology. That is, each organization or each department within the larger enterprise essentially had their own system associated with each of the pieces of the supply chain. For example, sales and marketing would have a sales and marketing application, uh, such as uh, a CRM kind of application. Finance and accounting would have their own accounting systems and tracking of financial uh, considerations. Uh, we'd have manufacturing, engineering, shipping, etc. within the supply chain, each having their own little island of technology. Obviously, the inefficiencies associated with that kind of environment has an impact on the overall efficiency of the organization. So if you consider that the linkages, for example, between the marketing and sales system and the finance system, those interfaces between those diverse systems can become extraordinarily complex in terms of the data that needs to move between them. Uh, those inefficiencies created through the development of those interfaces would uh, essentially impact the overall success of the supply chain. In over the last couple of decades, the implementation of enterprise resource planning systems, or what we call ERP systems, has created an environment where a single application can service the entire supply chain. So for this particular lesson, the reading and material associated with this lesson essentially relates back to the implementation and support of those ERP systems. So consider that ERP is not just a manufacturing type of an implementation, but also services uh, and other kinds of product development uh, activities. Uh, the use of an ERP is extraordinarily important, and of course from an IT perspective, one that requires a great deal of effort in order to implement. Some of the challenges associated with ERP implementations really relate to a cultural change within the organization. So think about this for a second. In your particular role within your organization, you may very well uh, have certain processes or procedures that you follow related to the different piece of the supply chain that you support. Now, IT comes in and tries to implement an automated system to change essentially how that workflow that you perform is, is done. In, in many organizations or in many instances, doing process reengineering is an important part of improving the efficiency of the organization. But in that case, it's usually an individual or team of individuals who are changing the way you do your job. Now IT comes in with a computerized system that, where the computer is telling you how to do your job. You can see sort of from that preliminary description how ERP can be problematic from an employee perspective and that it's not a person telling you how to do your job but a computer system. And so we struggle with that on a regular basis. And of course, this whole concept of change management within technology relates back to the implementation of ERP as it relates to this impact on workflow and process engineering. Also from, a, from a, an enterprise-wide perspective, Consider that large organizations that implement ERP have to change essentially every process in the supply chain in order to implement an ERP. You can sort of get a bigger picture of what this must look like from an organizational perspective, trying to automate every component within the organization. Also within this lesson, we not only focus on ERP as an implementation activity, but also CRM. CRM relates to customer resource management or customer retention management, a number of different, customer relationship management, a number of different definitions for that term. But essentially it is how we manage our customers and how we manage the interactions with our customers. 
If you think about it from a supply chain perspective, CRM can be considered a component of ERP, or it can be a standalone application that essentially is at the beginning of the ERP process or beginning of the supply chain process. Customer Relationship Management, or CRM, is essentially a, a component for tracking and managing all customer activity. For example, you reach out to a customer to deal with a particular issue, CRM tracks that issue. Later, an individual goes in to talk to that same customer and that information is available to them. As well as dealing with things like lead tracking uh, as well, so a potential customer would be tracked within a CRM application. CRM is an extraordinarily compo important component of any enterprise that deals with customers and of course that's pr pretty much every enterprise. And so the idea of building a valid and strong CRM system is, is extraordinarily important from an IT perspective. As it relates to CRM, uh, because CRM is an automated method of tracking our customers, oftentimes it also rolls into our electronic commerce environment. We're going to talk a lot about e-commerce. You're going to hear a lot about this in the course and through the, the, the course of your reading as well. E-commerce essentially is all commerce activities occurring in an electronic medium. Whether that be between the business itself and a consumer, a B2C environment, or whether it be between the business and another business uh, organization, uh, a B2B environment, those kinds of commerce related activities, buying, selling, trading, uh, those kinds of things uh, are essentially considered e-commerce in an electronic environment. Some of the considerations around e-commerce also relate to the internet. We've talked about the internet in previous lessons and we'll talk about them in a future lesson. But the use of the internet has become an extraordinarily important component related to the organization's ability to perform its business functions. Not just from a buying and selling perspective, which is really the focus of e-commerce, but as well from a marketing and sales perspective as well. Again, e-commerce really relates to the activity of buying and selling product in an electronic form, so that's really our focus for this particular lesson. There are some important considerations and some important technologies related to both the B2C, business to consumer and business to business, and we'll touch on those in more depth uh, in the course itself, uh, and particularly in your reading. I'll give you some examples. In a B2B setting, we deal with uh, technologies such as EDI, electronic data interchange, which is really the relationship between the two businesses and how the transactions are managed between the two businesses. For example, I'm a manufacturing organization and I'm dealing with a supplier who's providing me raw materials as it relates to the performance of my manufacturing effort. If I'm, depending on the inventory methodology that I'm using, that supplier will often have electronic access to the inventory within my organization so that when I hit a certain inventory level I automatically receive an order from that supplier to maintain my inventory level. Uh, inventory methodology such, such as just-in-time inventory or JIT rely heavily on a business-to-business -business relationship so that those supplies reach my organization in a timely manner. If that relationship is not established or if that relationship breaks down either because of electronic issues or other kinds of issues, then I don't have the raw materials I need in my manufacturing process and my manufacturing effort stops. Therefore, I lose all productivity up to that point or from that point forward and could potentially impact my ability to deliver products to my customers. So think about B2B in a much broader context. It's just not two businesses buying from each other, but it really is the maintenance and sustainability of a manufacturing or even a service delivery model. A business to consumer is the one we're most familiar with. So if you consider you know, purchasing from Amazon or even eBay, for instance, would be a, business, a B2C kind of an environment. In that context, it's much more traditional than a B2B type of an environment in terms of are you know, searching through, identifying what we're looking for, and then performing the purchasing transaction, et cetera, in an electronic setting. There are other kinds of e-commerce activities. We think about C2C, consumer to consumer, those kinds of direct interactions between two consumers in an electronic setting. And uh, you know, we're, we're looking at things like, even like eBay, for instance, where you're buying and selling directly from an individual, you can consider a C2C setting, as well as a number of other sites where you would purchase directly from a consumer. In those settings, we deal with a whole different set of issues, primarily related to the relationship between the two consumers. 
uh, ensuring that the transaction occurs in a legitimate and legal way, as well as some ethical considerations in terms of how we deal with that transaction electronically, what kinds of privacy uh, considerations and electronic uh, uh, in terms of that environment do we have to deal with. So essentially e-commerce deals with a broad context of electronic interaction or interchange uh, in that respect. So how does all of this impact the business? And that's really where we want to wrap, uh, wrap up this particular lesson. If you consider that in most organizations, the uh, availability of the organization via the internet is an extraordinarily important piece. For example, most businesses today, I would say probably nearly all businesses today, have some form of visibility on the internet. Not necessarily to perform e-commerce activities, but certainly to make their presence known. Interfacing their internet uh, availability or internet presence with the back end systems of the organization, such as an ERP, uh, provides the organization the ability to improve efficiency in their overall setting. For example, I have a website, I'm a manufacturing organization, and I have a website. My customers who have done specific ordering from me or put in an order for a specific product can go onto my website and see the status of their ordering through the manufacturing process. Check on the status of shipping. Check on the status of billing. Those kinds of interactions, uh, or even perform their order electronically through the internet. Those kinds of linkages between my back office systems, such as ERPs, and the front end, the e-commerce piece, create huge value for customers. And of course, the more value you create for your customers, the more competitive advantage you generate internally, and therefore, the more successful you are as an organization. So this lesson is really focused on that. The last piece I really want to touch on before we wrap up this, this particular video lesson is really the future of e-commerce, the future of ERP from a technology perspective. And, and while we have one more lesson to discuss sort of overall IT's role, Think about, from an electronic perspective, the use of the internet as it's grown over the last two decades. Where does the, what does the future hold for us as it relates to that technology? And where do we foresee ourselves being in terms of electronic commerce? Obviously, the growth of uh, wireless connectivity in the form of iPhones and Blackberries, et cetera, has, has been, over the last five years or so, a, just a dramatic increase in terms of capability. That is, in my opinion, where we see ourselves going as it relates to the future of e-commerce, and that is more wireless or virtual kinds of access to products and services. So where a physical product in today's market uh, would require the access via the internet or via uh, walking into a brick and mortar shop, access to that particular product would be uh, direct. In the future, think about more products being virtual. That is, the ability to, to buy and sell a, a service electronically versus just a product. And of course, your iPhone applications, your BlackBerry applications are perfect examples of that. But the growth of that piece is going to be exceptional. So again, this lesson is really focused on back office systems like ERP as they relate to front office systems such as e-commerce kinds of activities over the internet or other direct access kinds of activities. So again, this concludes Lesson 5, and we will be moving on to Lesson 6. Thank you.